Dale Larson here, and I'm at the photo booth with a few recent acquisitions and this week's mail. Uh, jump right into it here with the recent acquisitions, and I and I lied. Right, man, right out of the gate, and I'm lying to you. Uh, there's only one recent acquisition. The rest of this is all mail. Uh, this is the uh, Lego action figure Boba Fett. I don't know if there's a name for uh, these specific figures. Uh, I, I already got rid of the box. Um, but uh, th these were like 30 bucks when they first came out. Uh, you know, when I saw them at that price, I knew I wasn't going to be in uh, for 30 bucks. It's just not... Not quite for me, not at that price point. Uh, but when I saw him on clearance for 10 bucks, I was like, yeah, let's go home. Uh, so I grabbed him. This, of course, is the Return of the Jedi version. Uh, it's not bad. You know, this isn't the kind of thing we're going to do a full review on, but obviously it was Boba Fett. I'm going to grab it, uh, put him on the back shelf. You'll be able to see him uh, blurry in the background there. It's, it's nice for what it is. Uh, after that, we've got uh, Jake from Tucson, Arizona, uh, coming through big time. Hey, you know, we got a, a, this, I'm on a timer here. Not, not just the regular camera timer, but uh, this guy over here, this plush, uh, giant-headed Boba Fett plush thing over here, is so precariously balanced that I honestly don't know how much longer he's going to be able to sit up there. The lid of this box is just, like, so delicately, we got to move fast. So in the back here, Jake from Tucson, Arizona, coming through big time with the Hot toys, and I stress that, hot toys, uh, not Sideshow Boba Fett. Because I was mistaken. Uh, when uh, when I took this out of the box earlier this week, uh, I, I posted a picture of it on Instagram, and I was like, hey, look at this, Sideshow toys. I don't collect, I don't generally collect these kinds of figures, you know, the higher end, one, uh, six scale, Sideshow hot toys, all that stuff. It's just, it's not something that I go for. I would normally rather have, you know, ten figures at a lower price point than one larger figure regardless of how amazing this thing is, and it really, truly is amazing. I just, this is the kind of thing I never thought I would actually own or have or see in person uh, or or definitely not add to my collection. So uh, I am I am blown away by the generosity of Jake uh, sending this thing in. Um, I uh, Like I said, I misrepresented it when I posted it on Instagram because I just, I don't pay attention to the announcements and stuff for these kinds of figures because I don't expect to actually be able to own them. Uh, so it's just kind of like, eh, that's a thing I'm not interested in. I'm not really going to pay attention to what's being released. Um, but, uh, this thing is truly incredible. It is truly, like, screen accurate as far as I can tell. Um, I'm not going to go over it with a, you know, frame by frame next to props and whatever to check it. Uh, I'm just going to bask in the glory of what it is, uh, and the generosity of Jake to send this thing in to me. It truly is. Uh, an, an incredible, incredible piece. I mean, obviously, I'm a Boba Fett fan, and this will be, this is a key, central piece of my collection going forward, and as if that wasn't enough, uh, Jake also sent in, I had to check to make sure this was the one he sent in, because it has ink on the bottom of his feet. Uh, this is vintage Kenner Fett for the Boba set. Uh, currently, he will be number 386, uh, and Jake did ask that uh, we give a shout out to Realm of Collectors and the Realm of Collectors podcast, which, uh, give it a, give them a, a few, I believe Realm of Collectors is on Facebook, a uh, very large collector community, um, and I, all I can say is thank you. Up next, Daniel from Aloha, Oregon, we have the Zuoger, Zuoger, uh, it's a Sentai series, alright, I'm going to move both head here so it doesn't fall over. Uh, it was one of the more recent uh, Sentai, for those who don't know, is like Power Rangers, but it's it's how they started in Japan. Uh, and Sentai has actually been going on over there in Japan since uh, the late 70s. Uh, grew out of all the old Godzilla and Ultraman and those types of shows. In fact, Spider-Man, Supaidaman, uh, was one of the earliest uh, Sentai, Toku, tokusatsu, you know, uh, Sentai sort of shows in that whole era. Um, giant robots, five colored, you know, colored, five different color suited, you know, just like the Power Rangers. So Power Rangers was actually like the 12th. I'm, I'm off my game right now, but I believe uh, Zoo Ranger, which is the Power Rangers, was like the 12th series somewhere in there. Uh, Zoo Oger uh, is from like a year ago, two years ago. So this is probably what you'll be seeing Power Rangers pick up in America and the United States uh, in another year or two. Uh, Go Busters is just hitting the United States as, I don't know what they're calling it, but Go Busters is from like, I don't know, 2010, 2011. It's been out for, for years in Japan. So anyway, long story short, too late. Uh, this is a Zoo Oger Mini Pla, Mini Pla uh, little model kit. These are like blind box things uh, as far as I know. But uh, Daniel obviously sent this in uh, because he knows I'm a translucent nut, <laughs> a fan for translucent stuff. Uh, and regardless of the particular design of this uh, Zord, 
and the functionality of it. Uh, I love me some translucent plastic. And even better than that, I hate to say it, but the truth is uh, he did include the box, which has uh, some of the really great uh, box art showing the characters from this particular uh, Sentai show. And I love the designs of these characters. Not a, I'm not loving these these robots. I'm not loving this particular design. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like... It's definitely an 8-bit sort of inspired thing. Uh, I don't know if that pulls more from like Mario or from Minecraft. Uh, they The shows always sort of tap into whatever is the... Whatever is the big thing that the kids are into, whether it's cell phones or, or collectible card games or Minecraft or whatever, but that's that's sort of the feel of that that series. Um, but uh, yeah, no, these uh, these helmets look great and those costumes are really fantastic. But I haven't seen much of the show because we don't get that stuff in the United States because of Bandai and all the limitations. Anyway, moving on, Robbie from Roanoke, Alabama uh, sent in Vintage Fet number 387. Can't even see him down there. Vintage Fat number 387. Let's get them both up here. Let's get 386 and 387 up here so you can actually appreciate these guys. Looking good. This one's pretty clean, pretty consistent color. Uh, this guy's got a little bit more discoloration to him, but uh, if you've been watching for any amount of time, you know that the more wear, the more I love them, and the more perfect they are, the more I love them. I just love them all, so those are both great. Uh, also, bro um, also, Robbie from Roanoke, Alabama, uh, 1997 Spawn Rotur, Rotur, R-O-T-U-R-R-R, -R -R -R. Um, weird figure, I don't know, McFarlane was doing a lot of weird things, uh, kind of looks like he could be from, I don't know, Halo or something, but uh, this figure's from 1997, so I don't know if he's pulling from anything other than uh, the Spawn comics or something, Boba Fett, get out of the way. But uh, he's got a weird sort of joint in his neck. He's got this weird McFarlane-style gun. He's actually got a uh, wired tail and then, of course, his rotor on top. So it's a weird figure. He's actually even got articulated fingers there, which is a, a rare thing. Um, Robbie also sent in the 2008 Johto Cast. Johto Cast, uh, if, you played, if you played Masters of Tereskazi back in the day uh, on PlayStation, you know who he is. He's, he popped up in the comics a couple of times as well. Basically just a Boba Fett impersonator. Uh, going around getting jobs uh, on Boba Fett's reputation. Uh, and then I think they had a confrontation at some point, and Boba Fett put him in his place and kicked his butt or something. I don't remember. Um, but uh, I did mention him recently, and I can't remember what video I mentioned him on, so I don't know if that's what Robbie's tapping into uh, or if he just sent it to send it. Either way, much appreciated. Uh, and lastly, he also sent uh, the 1996 uh, Power of the Force 2 Wing Blast Rocket Pack Boba Fett, which... Uh, Look, it's weird. It's weird. He's got this whole rocket pack thing. It's like, hey, Boba Fett's got a rocket pack. How can we go even? How can we do rocket pack extreme? Because it's the 90s. Uh, and this is what they came up with. So uh, he's got a missile firing rocket here. He's got guns. He's got wings. There's rockets on the inside of these wings. And he just uh, he just kind of snaps in here. He just uh, snaps right in here. Oh, it's like a slidey. It's like a, he's got a peg on his back. And then uh, if... If he had his regular uh, Boba Fett jetpack, it would just slide right on there. I've got, I've got a couple of those in a bag of Power of the Force figures, but uh, it's cool. It's fun. It's you know, at the time I was like, that's a silly thing, and I don't want it, and that's not Boba Fett. But now I can look at it and go, ah, it's fun. It's fun. It's not hurting anybody, and that's a cool thing. And look, it's even got his uh, his Mythosaur uh, skull symbol there on the wing. Uh, Sean from Lompoc, California. I think that's how you pronounce that. L O M P O C Lompoc. Uh, sent in the giant-headed uh, plush Fett with his, with his squishiness. Uh, no no rangefinder here. No jetpack. He looks naked from the back. Um, but, more importantly, he also sent in this uh, incredible uh, piece of signage from his... Uh, Toys R Us was closing in his area, and he uh, managed to grab a piece of signage or two and sent him out to a couple of his favorite YouTubers, and I just want to say thank you. you. Look at this. He even put it in a frame. This is ridiculous. Uh, this is great. You'll definitely see this in the background uh, of the show um, as a testament to what used to be, to what was once, and what likely will never be again. Um, Alex from No Address, because it's shipped directly from Amazon, uh, Alex sent in the Polaris figure. Uh, recently, I did. Uh, we did a couple of videos on Build-A-Figures. You know, I'm actually going to crack this open here. Uh, we did a couple of figures talking about my Build-A-Figure collection, what parts I had, what parts I was still looking for. Um, and then uh, I even showed uh, 
uh, I showed all the, the the figures that were in different states of being built, um, and Warlock was almost complete, and Alex uh, realized that he just could not let that go on any further because he knows it's such a great figure, and he knew I would appreciate it uh, having a fully completed Warlock. Uh, he wanted to make sure he sent that in so that Warlock could be done. Self-friend. Query, what is Warlock? He's done. So, anyway, and somehow I'll, I'll figure out how to get him to stand up. I don't know, actually. I haven't been able to play with him yet, so I don't know what his joints are. There we go. Awesome. Hey, big thank you again to Jake, Daniel, Robbie, Sean, Alex. Thank you for spending a few minutes with me today talking toys and looking at stuff. Hit like, hit subscribe if you aren't here. Hit like, hit subscribe if you aren't already a subscriber. Share this video. Say hey in the comments. Later.